And good evening, everyone. How is everyone? We have a lot of people that were interested in seeing this training tonight. I know a lot of people message me. They're going to be watching on replay because they're out in the field or they're Christmas shopping. I cannot believe Christmas is in four days. Who has all their shopping done? I need to get one more thing and then I'm done. And then I'm done. Um, but tonight is a big training. For those of you that don't know me, if you're new to the group, um, I'm super glad you're joining us. My name is Cheryl Hazer. I founded Sisters Who Scale. I am a business growth coach and I specialize in scaling service industry businesses, particularly cleaning businesses. So a little bit about me. I own a residential and commercial cleaning business with a power washing division in the spring and summer here in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I grew the business from a zero to over $650,000 a year and growing in three and a half years, working about 20 hours a week. So we've grown consistently in between 30 and 35% a year in revenue. And the best thing is we did it during a pandemic. So we went through a recession already, right? So it can be done. I am living proof. I started as a solo cleaner. I know a lot of you um, either started as solo cleaners or you are solo cleaners. Um, and I can tell you for real that I have probably made all of the mistakes known to man when I started. Things like not knowing my worth, pricing too low, definitely not communicating effectively and getting walked on by clients because I didn't have good communication, right? I hired all the wrong people because I was desperate for bodies and then those people ended up trying to run my business. So um, I've seen it all and I mean it can be chaos if you don't know what you're doing I was a single parent when I started and I'm gonna be honest with you I just needed money I needed money to pay my bills to buy groceries so I could take care of my son I didn't start from a point of oh I know everything there is to know about business and I'm a genius and everything will work out for me that is not how I started this at all. I got chewed up a bit. I was spit out a lot, but I never quit. And I kept going because I believed I could do it. I believed I could make it work. So today we're gonna to discuss why, unfortunately, 80% of cleaning businesses fail um, and what we can do to avoid some major mistakes. Some of them that I've made myself um, and these mistakes that we're going to talk about today that we want to avoid can lead to closing your doors. So let's get started. So the number one thing, if you have a pen and piece of paper, if you're on your phones taking notes, I definitely suggest you take some notes. Um, this first one's going to sound simple, but it's missed so much. Number one is failing to plan not having any kind of plan in place before you start. So let me, let me know if this sounds familiar. Well, I need money and I like to clean. I clean my own house good. Cleaning relaxes me. Maybe I should clean some houses. I'm gonna put an ad up for cleaning services on Facebook and see what I get. Has anyone ever said that to themselves. I did. <laughs> so then from here, what happens is you get a couple of clients, you're feeling good, then you get a few more, and you're solo cleaning, and it's hard work, so you ask a friend to help you clean some houses, right? And you pay them under the table. Then they start not showing up on time, showing up all unkempt, wearing crazy hats and slippers and stuff like that. Then they ask you if they can clean a scheduled house on Saturday and not Friday because they have something to do. 
So you get frustrated and you just end up cleaning this house yourself because this person is starting to become unreliable, right? And the story goes on. You know you can't service all these clients that you picked up yourself because when you started picking them up, you had the help, right? But you say to yourself, no one cleans like you do or the person you hire doesn't listen and they show up looking like a train wreck, right? not properly representing what you want your company to look like. Then you have to listen to all their drama in the house all day long. And this list just keeps going on and on and on. Well, I don't know about you, but the news flash is, is this is exhausting. And with multiple clients, you are physically and emotionally drained, you're wiped out after a week of this and you give yourself a whole year like this and then tell me how you feel right so it gets tough so you see this isn't a company this is a side hustle you have right if there are no systems in place and no staff trained correctly this is a side hustle where you're generating some income no matter if it's twenty thousand a year fifty thousand a year or a hundred thousand a year if you're working that hard this is a rat race and doing this all by yourself is eventually going to wear you out physically and emotionally. So I was there. I lived through this. I can tell you this firsthand. You need a plan of operation. You need a complete program on how to attract, hire and train your staff. So they stay with you as long as possible. Your staff isn't going to stay with you forever. Get used to that. But the goal is, is to keep them as long as you possibly can. The average employee in the average company that doesn't have a lot of systems in place, they stay three months. I can tell you that most of my staff stays way longer than three months. Are they gonna move on after two years, three years? Of course, right? Things happen. Some of you will stay. Most of them will move on, but the goal is to get them to stay for as long of a period, you know, as possible, right? So that's a huge, it's a huge one. You also need to have cash flow to help you grow. You need to have advisors to help you avoid making huge mistakes. You basically need everything, right? So myself, quickly, I realized I needed to pull in some professionals to help me grow this business or I was going to stop doing it, right? It's too hard on your own to try and figure everything out. Now, I know some of you will try and figure some things out and make stuff up along the way, but if you got the help faster, you would avoid all these mistakes and you'll have a better chance of staying alive and succeeding in this business, right? So number one is not having a plan not knowing how you're going to do it you just open up shop you get some business cards you get a facebook page you get a name put ads in the paper and you just go in and clean and you don't have an ounce of business skills going on that's how most of us start so that was number one failing to plan number two is having a marketing plan so you don't know how many cleaning business owners I talk to on a daily basis that says they got their clients word of mouth, which can be good, but only to a point. Now, why is it good only to a point? Because you will take on any client that's referred to you. If so-and-so gives you, refers this person, and then that neighbor's a nightmare, and this one has 19 bathrooms. You're going to take on everything, right? And so you're all excited about getting another client. It's cool. I will admit getting client after client after client is awesome, but that client needs to be in your target market. Why is that? Well, do you all know who your target market is? Who is your best customer? Like when you take on any job and don't have things correct, like a pricing model per house or per building, if you don't have the right pricing model, you're going to lose money. And you can lose a lot of money if you don't have a right pricing model because once you price a house, you can't go back. If it's taking you twice as long and you underbid that, you can't go back and say, oh, I'm sorry, um, I priced you at $100. You really need to be at $200. They're going to fire you. So that's because you don't, know, you don't look like you know what you're doing. 
Um, so that's not going to work. So pricing model is massive and I see it all the time. I hear it. I see it. I've lived it. You do a sight unseen estimate. You give them a price based on square footage or number of bathrooms or however you do it. You get to the house. Now you haven't seen the house and the woman on the phone says, oh, it's not that bad. I try and keep up with it. That is the kiss of death, ladies and gentlemen. You get to the house and it's a complete disaster. It looks like a hoarder house. <laughs> and you've priced it at $150 and you're like, oh my God. They haven't picked up anything. You didn't tell them to declutter the house. So they haven't picked up a thing. Okay. The place is a complete shit show. You haven't met them. You have not developed a rapport, a relationship. They don't know what to expect for services. They just think that they're getting their house cleaned. That could mean 10 different things to 10 different people, right? Besides the normal vacuuming, the bathrooms, the kitchen, um, the dusting, there's no expectations that have been set yet. And this is the crucial, it's crucial to do the expectations at the estimate when you're in front of them because you're building a rapport. So these expectations need to be totally fleshed out with the client while you're sitting in front of them and completely understood why. Because if they're not, you're going to get burned and if things go sideways, they don't want to pay for the work. How many of you have, have not gotten paid for the work. It's happened to me because I wasn't clear on my expectations and my communication. Now I only speak anything I tell you all. I only speak because I know from total 1000% experience, right? Because it's happened to me. So another thing, do they want their slider clean because the dog's nose prints are on it? Did you discuss that? The slider's in the kitchen. They think you know to clean it. What if it's not in what you usually do? You need to know those things. Otherwise, there's so much gray area going on, right? And so, do they think they're getting a deep clean for a basic clean price? Did you explain that? Did you explain the differences? And all of this stuff, little by little, can unravel into a complete disaster. And then it takes you three times as long to clean the house because it was so dirty. So when you go to send them an invoice, you only take payments on Venmo. I know a lot of people only do Venmo. Disaster, bad. So now you're only taking payments on Venmo and they're unhappy because a lot of things weren't done and they refuse to pay. So now you have just worked for free. Congratulations, you were their slave for a day and then they go and leave you a bad review because they're jerks, right? So now, not only did you not get paid, you get a bad review. Why? Because you didn't set the expectations, okay? You didn't have a plan on how to explain to them what exactly is included in this. I never do an estimate sight unseen, period, never. I don't care if it's going to take me, if I get to go out and do five estimates a day or whatever it is. I never do it. So this is the madness that will make you close your business because it's super frustrating. And you you feel like you're you're working hard and you're doing everything to make these people happy. But there's just a few tweaks that you haven't done yet because you don't know how to do it yet, right? So this is the stuff that closes people's businesses. This is the stuff that puts you in the 80% and not the 20% of successful businesses. So has this happened to anyone? If any of this stuff sounds familiar, type the word madness in the chat. That is the word for this live topic. Type the word madness because I want to see if any of this has happened to you. I've heard a ton of it. I want to see anyone on this chat if, if these are some of the frustrations that you're feeling. So we're going to round this out. Number one, you don't know who your best customer is. Number two, you don't have any plans in place for pricing, for great communication skills, for training your staff, and for payments, okay? So here's another question. How many of you are still not taking credit cards? Why would you put yourself in that situation? The situation of not getting paid if something goes wrong. That's why we want to take 
credit cards. It's happened to me and I was like, no way, this is never happening again, right? So you're not a doormat. You're a business owner, okay? And don't let anyone treat you any different. If you don't know how to market to the right customers, they take advantage of you. And these are all of the things that can go wrong. So if you set the expectations from the beginning, these if you set the right expectations, these things will not continue to happen because not everyone is your customer. You have to say no to the wrong ones, right? I can spot out a bad customer a mile away. I have a phenomenal sense of saying, nope, nope. Nope, right? So I kind of I can tell because I've been doing this a while and I do all the estimates. So I, I talk to all the people, right? So I know I, I, I just can tell. And I say to myself, this person's gonna be a complete crazy person. We're not getting tortured by them. Nope, I'm not gonna put myself through it. I'm not gonna put my staff through it because I value my staff too much, right? And what a breath of fresh air it is to actually be able to say no to someone. That is like, that's one of the coolest things you can do in your business because it's so empowering. When you say no to a complete potential nightmare of a client, you're like, whoo, dollar to bullet. You know what I mean? So you guys have to own this. You are not a bank, right? You're not a slave. This stuff has to stop but you have to put certain systems in place in your business to enable it to stop. So let me give you an example. This was a recent example. This was a couple of weeks ago. A woman called on the phone. She needed an estimate. Um, so I set it up, very nice. It was an apartment. I go to the house, right? It was an, uh, like I said, it was a small apartment. Um, and I opened the door and it was a hoarder house. And all I could smell was cat pee and boxes. There was cat pee and stuff and boxes everywhere. And it just was a mess. The poor thing. I felt for her because I knew there was a lot of emotional stuff going on there, right? She needed the help, but this isn't our specialty. This isn't our warehouse. So after 10 minutes, I listened to her. I politely said no. I gave her some insight on how to get someone that specializes in this type of clean out because she was just putting messages out on social media and not telling anyone that it was a horror situation. Now most people would be horrified. I am a compassionate person. So I gave her some suggestions on how to find the right person. But I would no in no way take on a hoarder house. No way. We would have to charge her so much money. She couldn't afford that, right? So I knew that. So you have to stay in your lane. You have to know who your target market is and don't vary from that. So that's failing to have a marketing plan. That's your target market, failing to have that plan. So number three on the list is you don't know how to hire good staff. In the cleaning industry, it's all too common for small business owners to quickly hire warm bodies to just fill an opening, someone quits last minute. Listen, it's gonna happen. Get used to it or get out of the game. But there's ways to prevent stuff, To there's ways to attract the right people in your business to minimize hiring those bad people that are gonna do you wrong, right? So picture this, you quickly hire someone, you, warm body coming in, right? There's new employees thrown into the job without proper training because there's chaos in your business, okay? Um, and then that person's left to fend for themselves to kind of figure it out. And so no wonder why your employee turnover is so high, right? In the, in the industry, because there's no systems in place. It's a really bad idea just to hire anyone. We all know that, but you get desperate, right? I get it. I've been there. You need structure. You need a plan. Do you have great hiring ads? Do you know how to write? an ad that's gonna attract your ideal staff. Do you know how to do that? Or are you just throwing anything up there? Residential cleaners, you know, must have a license, la la la. Is it not exciting? Is it not emotional? Is it not attracting that right person, right? 
that's a, that's a huge part of it and people don't realize it. I look at some people's ads and I'm saying, no wonder why you're not finding anyone, right? You need to kind of revamp it, change it, make it to what you want. You know, there's a lot of things just in that, writing that perfect ad that you can attract the right people. So what does your interview process look like, right? Are you asking them the right questions? Are you doing background checks? You can't just put anyone in these houses. They could steal stuff. They could steal your clients from you and clean them on the side if you don't, if you can't trust them, right? All kinds of stuff that can happen. Do you have an orientation procedure? What does it look like? Do you just have them come in and then they go out in the field? Do you have an employee handbook that they sign that outlines all your rules? What's in your employee handbook? Have you had it checked out by a professional HR person? <clears throat> what does it say? What protections are in there for you as the business owner so you don't get burned? Do you have a conflict of interest? That's a huge one. Huge, right? Are you protected? Are your employees showing up smelling like weed going in the houses? I know some states are making it legal. Massachusetts, it's legal. It's legal to do, but I don't want my staff showing up smelling like weed and going into my houses that are paying 200 plus dollars for a cleaning. Are you kidding me? No, not happening on this watch. Not happening, right? Not happening. They're allowed to smoke weed, not before work, only after work. They can't come to smelling like a pot plant, right? So you have to have procedures in place for everything. So ask yourself, do you have a complete system on how to train them to clean a house properly and efficiently so they're not eating time up on the clock? Do you know the difference between a basic clean and a deep clean or a move out clean? Do they know the difference? If you don't know the difference, they definitely don't know the difference. You probably know the difference. But if that's not communicated and trained effectively, they're going to miss stuff that they don't know they're missing, right? So that's a lot of, that's, that's good train, having good trainers, having your trainers trained so they can train the cleaning techs. There's so many pitfalls that can happen, okay? And so much to teach. And you need to have the right systems in place to roll out this success plan for them. Because if they don't have a success plan, that is you failing. You are failing to train them correctly to set them up for success, right? If they don't feel like they're organized, they're just going to quit. Why would they want to stay with a company that doesn't know what they're doing, right? And this, unfortunately, will keep happening over and over again until you quit, until you're in the 80%. If you don't get this stuff in order, because time is of the essence. You only have so much time to get this stuff right. So I go over all these things in my programs. Like I said, there's a million things to do. There's a million things with hiring. There's a lot with selling. There's a lot with, you know, learning how to execute and stuff like that. Um, I work with business owners that are needing customized help with attracting and hiring the right talent, how to write the ads, all that stuff. So that was number three not knowing how to hire the right people. So number four is growing too fast. This is a this is a problem, even though it sounds like it's not a problem. Most cleaning companies are ready to take on any job that comes along to have money coming in. If you're having a lot of success, if you're adding new business, it's exciting, I know. Watching your business income grow rapidly feels really good. However, as exciting as it may be, there are numerous things that can happen if you don't have the right systems in place. Customers can get neglected if you don't have the right organizing, the right scheduling, or they can get forgotten, okay? If you don't have your cleaning tech training in place and running smoothly, the quality can suffer. Then before you know it, you're losing customers because there's chaos going on in the houses, okay? Listen, I have lost clients because cleaning tech's not doing their job or not understanding what they need to do. Customers will only be forgiving for so long before they hire someone else, and that totally sucks. That totally sucks. The key to true success here is growing slow 
and steady. So slow and steady wins the race. Mapping out a direction and learning the business slower than faster. Remember, you are only as good, and some of you may not like this, some of you may, but you are only as good as your net income. Gross revenue doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. You could be bringing in a million dollars in gross revenue, but if you're only profiting 100,000, 150,000, what are you in business for? What are you doing, right? So the only thing that matters is what you retain at the end of the day. What is your profit after all expenses, including payroll, insurances, everything else? Who cares what your gross income is at the end of the day if you don't have a big paycheck? So I'm a net girl. I'm not a gross girl. I'm a net girl. I want to see the bottom line and what's coming in. Okay. Number five, undercapitalized. Most people don't think about this because you can get started in a cleaning business for like under like 2K. You can grab some equipment and you can just go clean houses, right? Is that a business? No, it's a side hustle. So most companies start on this shoestring budget. I did. I did. Most of us did. So you may have no money when you started. You need to get out of debt or something like that. But if you're serious about growing this business, you need to have money available to cover the daily operational expenses. Things like taxes, workers' comp policies. Those aren't cheap, right? Supplies, equipment. Depending if you're just in residential, it's a little cheaper. It gets more expensive with commercial than power washing. You have to buy a rig and stuff. That can be, you know, you'll need funding for that, right? So your business should also have the ability to secure bank loans for unexpected negative financial situations or emergencies. It's always a good idea to research what your costs are. What are they going to be early on, right? And most cleaning companies don't do this. They start with a mop and a broom. You know that company? What is it called? Two maids and a mop or something like that? I don't know. It's like you have to see what your cost of equipment are going to be, your supplies, your payroll, your employee taxes, your insurance, company cars, rent for your office. There are a bunch of things you need to cover, so you just kind of have to have like a plan, right? Hiring employees is also going to, you know, accrue additional business costs, recruiting, administration, your background checks, your drug testing if you're doing it, um, orientation, your training, and not to mention like the taxes and the wages, like I said. So... There's more, this list isn't all inclusive. There are many more expenses to be contemplated because no two businesses are alike. So make sure you have a really good estimate of your startup costs. So these are the top five. And so many companies start their businesses for a little while and then they get burned out because they don't possess these skills beyond knowing how to clean. Just because you can clean doesn't mean that you know right off the gate how to run a business and that's the hard cold fact that's the reality that you get yourself all in this chaos and then you're like oh my god it's, it's just easier just to close the business down and go get a job right so you have to learn how to acquire these skills everyone okay you have to take time set Set time aside to learn these skills before everything gets out of control. Because trust me, if you don't have systems, you're just like, ah, you just want to quit the business, right? I see it. I hear it. I have clients come to me at the 11th hour when there is complete chaos in their business and they don't know what to do. My goal is to help you not do that and to do it before, right? So I will tell you what not to do. Don't wait to make a decision until it's too late to find out the answers, to learn the systems you need, to acquire that cash flow you need in your business, to learn how to hire people, to create that company culture, to keep your staff as long as possible. I teach my clients to avoid these pitfalls by supporting them on their journey to acquire the skills they are lacking, right? Then we get them where they need to go. My latest client, Scott, just learned how to hire his first employee. He went from paper, a paper calendar with his clients to transferring over to Jobber 
to schedule his jobs. He learns how to take he learned how to take credit cards on site instead of waiting days to get paid. He is learning the skills of how to let go of the reins and delegate to an employee and get some time freedom for himself instead of spending all day in the field and not being able to go home, do some clerical stuff and take time for his family. Now he's taking, because he put those systems in place, he's taking more calls to increase his revenue. So you can't increase the revenue until the systems are in place to work. Bottom line, right? So he's able to work from home like a few hours a week, I mean a few hours a day, right, in the afternoon. And he gets to see spend more time with his kids. Like this is real stuff here. If you put the systems in place, this like this is you can really have a really nice business for yourself, right? He's gonna be full time with his business, he's gonna give up his other job. I couldn't be more totally thrilled for him. He knew he needed help. He knew, we knew he had the skills that would already support him as he grew the business and learned he learned everything, right? And the best is, is he did it in three months of us working together, less than 12 weeks. He made all these gains, less than 12 weeks, right? So if this, any of this that I talked about today sounds like you, if you're tired, if you're frustrated, and there's just crap going on in your business. If you're struggling to hire and train the right staff or how to get the right clients, just reach out to me. If you're just done with guessing on how to do things and you're committed to getting these issues fixed, you have to have a chat with me because I can totally help you. What we do is we specifically see what's going on for you in your business, see what the issues are, see if we work well together, if we're a right fit for each other, right? And then we work on getting these problems fixed so you can move on and grow your business and get some time freedom for yourself because you all deserve time freedom. I know where you all have been on different stages of your business because I was there. And I'm telling you, you guys work damn hard and you need to get some relief. You need to get some time freedom, you do. I have three different programs with three different levels available. I have payment plans for every budget to get you the help you need. So if any of you are catching this on replay, I know Amanda and Natalia said they were on replay, they were still gonna be out in the field. Um, you can still type your message to me because I see them as well. Um, or you can reach out to me by DM. If anyone is watching this on replay, um, let me know because I still get the messages and I want to know if you have any questions at all. So it is now 5.30. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Like I said, I cannot believe that Christmas is four days away. I'm just like, oh my God. <clears throat> that came so, so fast. And it's busy, busy at work because all of our clients want their house clean before Christmas, before all their people come in. So the girl's been working super, super hard this week. Um, so that is how 20% of the people survive when they get the right systems in place. And the other 80% that don't do the work and get overwhelmed and don't take the time to figure stuff out, unfortunately, are not going to be in business long term. So that's the black and the white. I'm very black and white. I say it like it is. Um, I don't find there to be any reason why anything should be sugar-coated um, because life isn't sugar-coated. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the training. Let me know your comments and have a wonderful Christmas, holiday, whatever you call it in your state. Um, and I will see you all soon. Have a wonderful holiday. All right, bye-bye now.